Hello, it's Thursday today. It's just around 1pm. I've just finished all my morning desky stuff for the day, so I'm picking up the camera now. The next thing I'm going to do is my flute practice. I left it till quite late in the day yesterday to practice. I actually had a day off filming yesterday. It's Thursday today. We went to Barry on Tuesday, so Wednesday I had a day at home and I just, I got loads done. I was just being very productive all day, doing all the usual sorts of things. Anyway, I'm going to go practice. Recently when I've been doing my flute practice, I've been mostly working on scales and technique exercises, exclusively almost, but I've got some gigs coming up this weekend. And one I don't need to practice the repertoire for, one of them I do, so I just need to try and run through, preempt what we're likely to play because it's Acadian, I don't quite know. So I'm going to try and go through my list of things for that. Tomorrow I've got a funeral to go to, we are playing but there's no pressure because we're playing after the funeral at the sort of, the gathering after the funeral with a lot of my friend Helen's musician friends, we're all going to play together in her honour. Next week I've got a busy week, I've got three gigs and two rehearsals across five days, so it's going to be one of those weeks. <laughs> so when I'm going through my repertoire of stuff that I've done before, I'm basically making sure that I remember it all because we don't use sheet music, we memorise it all, so you know, if I haven't done it for a while, I can get halfway through and think, how does that next bit go? So I just need to make sure I can do it all without looking, <laughs> as it were. I haven't got it written down anyway, most of it, so it's all from memory. So it's like retrieving it from a memory. Also making sure that my tone is even, the articulations are evenly spaced, like it's in time basically, and not getting all raggedy, stuff like that. And just, yeah, that kind of thing. Mm. So I shall get on with that now. I've done about 50 minutes practice, I've come up for it and lunch now, oh, my legs are getting wobbly, I'm hungry, my veggies are going down fast, I do cook a lot of them. I am going to make myself some lunch with some black eyed beans because I've got some left that need eating. I'm keeping it fairly simple today, I've just sautéed some celery, courgette and mushrooms in a bit of olive oil. I am going to add some garlic and ginger I think. I'm such a creature of habit. So I've added garlic and ginger, also some dried chilli flakes, some lemon juice and soy sauce. I always do it. It's a total habit of mine. It probably looks like it's absolutely swimming in in uh, soy sauce. It's not actually. I think that's come out of the veggies, all that liquid. There's me lunch. I'm not sure how sustaining it's going to be actually because it's not very carby. I might have to have something else after. Well that was surprisingly delicious and I enjoyed every mouthful of that. I'm going to finish off with a nice lolly though. My daughter is actually out at the moment. She's got a patch of infected skin on her cheek, little patch, I'd say it's about that big, it's kind of round. Um, we think it's in Patigo, but we had a dermatology appointment recently, I wasn't vlogging because it was while I was still editing the Isle of Man footage, and Isabel's had two courses of oral antibiotics recently to combat in Patigo on the face. Uh, I'd say within the last two or three months, I'm not quite sure, but it's, it's still coming back. It, when I had my really long course of antibiotics for 10 days, it was during the Portugal series, back in February and March, I mean, it raged that Impetigo was terrible. It was the worst I think I've ever had. Apparently sunshine doesn't help it and I was out in the sun every day. But anyway, I digress. Since I've had that, I haven't had it back. Isabel's continuing to get it back. So the dermatologist didn't see the Impetigo at the time because Izzy didn't have it flaring up at the time, but she said maybe you're actually getting a cold sore virus which is turning into a secondary bacterial infection. So maybe the thing that's coming back is cold sore virus. So I've suggested Izzy goes, well, to the GP, but I did not succeed in persuading her to make a GP appointment with her. She didn't fancy the hassle. She just treats it with fusidin usually, topical antibiotic that she has on repeat prescription anyway. Um, but you know, it'd be nice to really kick it into touch and it not keep coming back, especially if she's going off to uni. So anyway, I've managed to persuade her to go to the pharmacist to have it looked at, but I think because of the medication that she's on, which is um, can be a little bit immunosuppressing, I think they'll just say, no, you have to go to the GP. But maybe if she hears it from them, she'll be more persuaded to do it. She's got plans, she's got a social life, She's uh, she's got lots of things she wants to do, she doesn't want the disruption of that. But I said, Izzy, how are you going to feel tomorrow morning if you wake up and it's twice the size and it's on your face? You're not going to be very happy, are you? Anyway, so she is, uh, she's kind of dealing with it. <laughs> Let's see what they say. I don't know. She said it feels crawly and tingly, just like in Patigo. But don't cold sores feel tingly as well? That's what I'm thinking. I think it might be a similar sensation. I'm not experienced with them. Oh, she's back. Mm. It's that time of the afternoon, post-lunch coffee pot going on. So Izzy came back from the chemist, they didn't look at it apparently, she said. They just said, call your dermatologist and get a prescription from them. 
And that was it. So she's come home and left a message on the answer phone. I do feel a bit of a mini guts letting her deal with it and not, you know, getting involved, making phone calls on her behalf and taking her down. But I really need her to be confident at dealing with it by the time she leaves home in September. So I'm kind of I'm holding back, just giving her instructions, you know, for now. And a lot of people do not like phoning people on the phone when they've never met them before. A lot of adults never ever like it in the whole of their lives so it's totally understandable when young new adults don't want to ring up a dermatologist or a GP surgery. But she's getting better at it. Yeah, I don't think she likes it. I don't think it's her favourite thing to do. I think if there's an online make an appointment option she'll go for that every time. But no, she's uh, she's not putting up a fight. <laughs> she's, get, she's going through the motions for me so fair play. It's all a learning curve. It's weird parenting an adult because when they're 18 it's like I don't feel like I can just order her around, you know, <laughs> lay down the law and stuff. But yeah, ah, I should uh, just try and be happy for the little baby steps steps towards independence. Anyway, I need to do more flute practice. I feel like I'm not really getting very much done today, but I really do need to go through everything that we might possibly play on Sunday night today, because I don't know if I'm going to get an opportunity on... I might. I might be able to do some on Saturday, I don't know, but I don't want to spend all day practicing on Saturday and then do a gig, because I'm going to be knackered for the gig. I might be flagging, you know, I need to have a bit of energy left for that. Anyway, um, uh, I don't know what I'm doing for dinner tonight. Izzy doesn't know what she wants. I have asked her. <laughs> she doesn't want tomatoes because her gums are all sore now, apparently. Oh, this is another thing that nobody can get to the bottom of. Why does she get sore, cracked gums every so often? Nobody knows. Dentist thinks it's because she brushes her teeth too hard. Is he's adamant that she doesn't. So I don't know. Stalemate there. There's my lovely cup of coffee made. Right, I'll speak to you after I've finished my next practice stint. It's just over an hour later now. I've just, yeah, done just over another hour of practice today. I've now gone through everything I think we might play at Sunday's gig. There will probably end up being more things thrown at me, to be honest, but I've done my best. I can't do any more than that. I can't, I don't have a crystal ball. So, you know, uh, anyway, all my uh, technical exercises have really paid off. Uh, everything's just easier to play for me at the moment, so I'm completely addicted to that. Speaking of which, I did make a little Amazon purchase earlier, which was another book of technique, flute techniques. The ones I've been using, I've been using Oh, since my 20s, I would say, and they're really good and they're really effective, but, you know, it'd be nice to try something fresh and new. So I've ordered a fresh and new one, but it is the same author, but I've read the reviews and they're saying it moves on. There's more in there than just the original practice books, which I've been working through for years. So that's good. I'm excited about that. And another thing is I am going to swap decided my handy cam camera which is not this one but my other one for the newer model i have wrongly informed you in a couple of videos recently i thought the earlier model of the camera was far superior to the newer model but it's not it is a newer model again i definitely read that somewhere i read it in a review and but no the one i'm going to swap it for is a newer model but anyway i've spoken to somebody at a camera shop for that i'm going to part exchange my one for it but the problem was mine is slightly cracked because the joby tripod those are those bendy gorilla pods they break i break them i get through one every three weeks so i don't buy them i basically anymore i learned my lesson luckily i used to persuade amazon to replace them for me because they shouldn't break in three weeks with a camera that's well under the weight it's designed to hold on it but I, it just used to break like the camera would be on the tripod on the work surface the leg would just suddenly bend without any warning and the thing bleh, off it goes smash so yeah learnt my lesson never using them again um, maybe with a GoPro or something really super light that will stand a, a fall but nothing that will stand a fall I don't think I'll ever use a gorilla pod for again or Joby anyway anyway my arms aching now I was uh, just nearing the end of my practice and I heard this door handle creaking up there and the tippy tiptoes coming down the stairs and I thought Isabel's on the scrounge or something I said yes and uh, well originally we were going to go out to lunch locally today and when she came up with her unsightly patch of infected skin on her face she kind of didn't feel like it but she's feeling happy about it now so she, now she would like to go out and eat an evening meal out so we'll be doing that in a pub oh look at those blackberries I haven't got anything to put them in though oh they're nice and soft actually perfect Perfect ripeness. Oh, I wonder if there's any maggots in there. They do get them, don't they? I've come out for a walk. Sometimes like, I get so involved in my own head in all the things on my to-do list that they 
I kind of magnify an importance in my own mind and I get them out of perspective and think terrible things of myself and not completing everything on the list for example even though I was over ambitious in the first place so when I get like that and start thinking oh no oh I'm behind I'm, I'm behind with everything that's when I think right go and have a walk and you'll come back with a fresh perspective any maggots no seems to be right oh it's sweet I'm eating it so carefully that is really nice Come here, I'm doing this because I've got the very focal thing happening now. Mmm. I used to wonder why old people held things out at arm's length. Just see them. Or go like this. Now I know. I am one of those people. Hey, guess who's popped into little on the way back from the walk? There's a couple of things I need, but I'm already out of. Not a lot. I've got my rucksack with me. Oh, there's a wine gum in there. Nice. Oh, the juice. 31 pence for those crumpets. I don't think they'll last this long. They're going down fast, actually. Speaking of which, let's just get two. I spy reduced fish. I just had a very funny um, shelf stacker. Uh, what's this? £3.14. No, I'm going to leave that, I think. Yeah, he noticed me filming and started um, play acting, I suppose. He was saying, and now the shelf stacker is discounting the products. And doing it all dramatic. <laughs> so what we got here then? Two pound forty-four for those pineapple. Lizzie's allergic. I like it. Seventy-six p. Do you know what? I would have it. I'm gonna just make sure. To remind her not to eat it. Sixty p for salad. Mm, no, it's a bit tired. I'm looking for fromage fraise. My daughter has to have vitamin D drops because she had a slight deficiency, so she had them prescribed, and um, she has them in Petit Falou or, or you know a fromage fraise. I tell you what, the Tesco's ones are much cheaper, but she's completely run out. Um, I'm gonna have to get them, aren't I? Mozzarella's well, gone up a bit, 85 p. Gonna get one anyway. Oh, hold on a minute. <laughs> Let's put that back. I've spotted the normal ones. Yeah, that's 69. That's better. Fancy some of this? Right, I'm gonna go and pay. I think. I'm back all sweaty from the walk. It's five to six. I am going to edit for an hour because Izzy wants to go to dinner at seven. And uh, that gives me an hour to do some editing. And I want to get ahead with it because of going out to the funeral tomorrow. I don't want to have loads to do on it tomorrow. So that suits me. So I'm going to put that lot away. And one good thing about eating out is no washing up. Yay. It's 7 p.m. Just finished editing. I suddenly had a thought while I was editing, didn't I? I thought, if she's got in Patigo, probably we shouldn't go to the pub and eat. And I've persuaded Isabel to have chips from the chippy instead so I'm going to go and get her sausage and chips and I'll probably have fish and chips or something like that instead we'll postpone our evening out I think it's for the best the NHS website the last time I looked said you should isolate for 48 hours after the start of the treatment for impetigo because it's so very very contagious and I know a lot of workplaces ban it completely like if anyone's got impetigo they have to work from home if they can or just not come in but last time I spoke to my GP about it they said no you're an adult you can be responsible about it you won't spread it just you know don't touch your face and then touch things and it'll be fine you don't need to isolate so I don't know but given that we don't really need to go and sit in the pub we're gonna have chips instead and go another time because it's not urgent anyway I do feel a bit sorry for her she was looking forward to it but uh, I think it's for the best anyway mm. right I'm gonna go get chips well I was gone a while they were cooking it fresh you see so this is what we got so I've got a fish there's a huge great big lump there because he's gone for the chicken crispy chicken strips which I, I rang her up from the fish and chip shop and gave her the options and she chose that and also chippies and Izzy said she can tolerate vinegar no problem now so it's got salt and vinegar on it and we're gonna enjoy it while watching telly together but thank you so much for watching today's video could you please give it a like if you happen to like it subscribe down below to watch more videos from me and I'll see you in the next video bye